Okay, I'll uh, start with the. Uh, we'll, we'll first go with electronic circuit simulation using the CAD, and then uh, later on we'll study about Arduino, and then we'll go into PCB design. Okay. So in this electronic circuit simulation, we are going to see what is ticker CAD, interfacing the sensors with ticker CAD, and interfacing output devices. So uh, whenever uh, we take an embedded system, so in that embedded system, we'll have input devices, we'll have uh, processing unit, we'll have output devices. So input devices are these sensors. These sensors will give you the information from the environment, and then that uh, information will be processed in the processor. So this processor we, we can use uh, microcontroller or any, any processors like uh, Raspberry Pi all these things and then we are going to control some output devices. Okay, So output devices might be a very simple output device is uh, um, say for example you take an LED, LED is an output device, very simple. So it is like uh, if you take some sensing input and if there is some uh, is after doing the processing, it is going to give you an LED indication that the temperature is high or temperature is low, all those kind of information you are going to get. So we are we will see the say use of sensors, we will see the use of output devices and um, as of today we will see uh, whether we can do the discussion on simple microcontroller based projects to fight COVID-19. Okay. So Tinkercad uh, is a very free to use and easy to use app okay, which was actually designed for 3D designing and later on they introduced uh, electronics to into that and then also coding, coding related to all you know and it is used by teachers, hobbyists and uh, people like you who are very interested in uh, learning about electronics or this thing. You can do each and anything whatever you are going to imagine. Okay. When you just open this uh, Tinkercad, the first home page you are going to see is with join now. You just have to click on join now and then use any of your uh, uh, Gmail account or Facebook login or any, or any of these account logins to log into this one. Okay. Here we are signing up. Recording is on. Hello. So here now uh, yeah, we are signing it with the normal email address. So for that email address you have to select the country, months, all those things. I hope you can follow this procedure easily. Username, password you need to keep and parents email not required. Okay. And when you uh, log in to this one, so you will see this kind of a thing. So here uh, your name will be given. And then 3D circuits, circuits, code blocks, lessons, so many other things are there. We are uh, very much interested in things called the circuits. Okay. So I am just uh, logging into my Tinkercad account. So after we log into the Tinkercad account, we are going to see uh, this uh, plot where we will see this name, okay, the name of your profile name and then uh, you have 3D design, circuits, code box, lessons, all those things. So as of now, we are uh, very much interested in uh, doing these circuits, okay. So if you just uh, click on the circuit, you are going to see this plot wherein you have uh, whatever circuits I have created, okay, these are the circuits which I have created. So all these things will be seen in this plan. So these are so many circuits which I have tried. Okay. So if you want to create a new circuits, click on the new circuits. I hope everybody is following. So when you just uh, open this plot, you are going to see the name of this circuit. Okay, this is the name of the circuit which will be uh, a random name which will be given. What you can do is you can just uh, double click on it and then type any name. Okay, so I have written it as Shashank Wire Circuit. So this will be the name which will be updated and all changes will be saved okay, in the cloud. So you just need to have an internet connection, that's it. 
okay so we need not save any of the circuits whatever you are going to just uh, to put it and drag it here and then you go back here all the things will be saved okay in session trial circuit you just have to click on tinker cat so you just, when you click on tinker cat it will be taking you to the home screen and in the circuit section see the new file which i have created session trial circuit it is there and when you double click on that new file you are going to see the push button which i have put in the plot okay see this is with the push button i have just uh, put this push button here okay so before uh, we start with uh, doing the circuits all those things i'll just explain you what are the things which are there in this plot okay so this will be for rotate okay if you take any components if you keep it here if you want to rotate it you can use this uh, function for rotating the components all this uh, components which are going to put it is not like uh, it doesn't look like a schematic diagram it looks like a graphical diagram whatever uh, uh, physical component is there how it looks very similar to that it is going to look like okay so this is, is a resistor and uh, if you want to delete anything you can just use the delete uh, button which is there in your keyboard or then this one and undo and redo is also there and annotations say for example you want to create a tutorial for uh, any circuit okay so if you are when you are going to create a tutorial you can just uh, put these annotations here you can write led is on or off something like this you can use annotations for giving a tutorial videos okay you can say, say for example if you want to create any youtube videos regarding the uh, ticker cat you can use that annotations it will be very much easy okay and then these are view or hide these annotations whatever uh, annotations are there you can just uh, use it to hide or view the annotations okay and code i'll explain with the uh, when we go to the audino section okay so when you are going to use audino this code section will be used and start simulation so uh, whenever uh, we will we'll see some circuits and uh, we will connect it and then we will do this start simulation so uh, whenever you are going to do that uh, it will be acting like what it has to do ok say for example LED uh, when it is connected to a battery I will take this LED and connect it to a battery and cathode must be connected to the negative or positive terminal which one is it cathode it must be connected to the negative terminal anode must be connected to the positive terminal and then when i start simulation it will be working okay the led is burnt now okay why the led is burnt because probably 9 volt is pushed into the led that is why led is burnt okay this is the symbol for something which is burnt in ticker pad please remember this will be the symbolic representation of something which is burnt okay in ticker pad so uh, why it is burned all those things we will see it one after the other ok so you just have to click it and delete it and export share all those all those things you guys know so now in the components you have basic components and you have all components all components in the sense whatever components which is available in uh, ticker cap everything it is there Okay, you are, you are going to see all the things when you just scroll it down. Okay, so many things are there. You can do n number of projects, you can do n number of simulation projects using this particular components which are available. Okay, so many things are there. Even say for example, if you are going to use the multimeter, oscilloscope, power supply, function generator, all these things are there, which, are, which we normally use it in uh, electronic uh, circuit simulations. Okay. And IC triple five timer, op-amp. Okay, so many things are there. Okay, you can use these things to create so many interesting projects. Okay, and then starters. Okay, in the starters you have basic starters, 
raising startups in the sense, say for example, you, uh, you want to know how to use the supports in uh, Ticker Can. So what you can do, you can just uh, take this startups and put it in the screen. Okay. So in this one, when you click on Start Simulation, the LED will be either off or on. Okay. Using the switch. Okay. Using a switch. Slide switch we say. This particular thing is called the slide switch. So these two things will be connected and these two things will be disconnected. Okay. So when you are going to see this particular, when you are going to see this diagram and recreate the diagram, it will in this plot itself, you can create another subplot of this kind. Okay. So what I, what we'll do is we just uh, remove this. It is not required as of now. Okay. And uh, RGB LED, DC motor, temperature sensor, tilt sensor, and PIR sensor. So many circuits are already there. Okay, it is already there. You can just use those basic circuit starters, and you can use Arduino starters. Okay, so just a connection of breadboard as well as Arduino. You say, for example, you are going to create some uh, project based on Arduino. You need not uh, keep a breadboard, take Arduino, and do the connections, all those things. Do, do this positive as well as negative connection for the breadboard. You have it directly there. Okay. So the only thing what you have to do is you just have to put it and then start uh, connecting the other components, other sensors, actuators, all those things. Okay, you can do that. So I just delete this one. And then these are the Arduino starters, circuit assemblies. So the, these are the just a small, very small circuit assembly. So here the glow circuit assembly is like uh, a battery is connected to the LED. And then when you start the simulation, yeah, automatically what will happen when positive is connected to the positive terminal, negative is connected to the terminal, the LED is going to glow. That's it. Okay. So those kind of very small simple circuit assemblies we are going to see. Here uh, this one is a uh, vibration motor. Okay. So the uh, vibration motor will uh, start the circuit assembly when you connect it. Actually, you should uh, see some vibrations here. If you see these lines here, small uh, dim lines, I think now you can see it properly that uh, it shows that it is vibrating. Okay, this is a vibration motor circuit assembly, and spin circuit assembly is like uh, normal motors which you are going to connect it to the battery and then you are going to use it for rotating. Okay, spin circuit assembly. So here, uh, this is a AAA type battery and you have an off on switch, okay. So when you start, uh, start this one, this will be on, okay, the battery will be on. When the battery is on, you can see this one. So it is around uh, 100 RPM, a small 100 RPM BO motor, we say, BO motor, okay. So these BO motors, we are going to use it for our uh, four wheel robot or two wheel robot with a caster wheel or those kind of robotic things we can use these kind of motors. Okay. I hope the plot everything is clear for you guys. So how to use the plot, what are the things which are there in the plot and starters all if you just click on that. So you have all the three things. One is normal basic starters and then Arduino starters and then circuit assemblies very small simple uh, circuit assemblies are available. Okay, use the basic components and play with all these basic components. Okay, we will start by seeing the 9 volt battery cell. Okay, normally when we start with electronic projects, we start with a battery as well as a uh, resistor, LED, all those kind of things, right? Very simple one. 
So we will we'll do that same thing now. We will take an LED here. I will protect this LED. I will make sure that it is in this form. So uh, for an LED, to know whether, the, whether it is an anode or cathode, LED have two terminals. One is anode, another one is cathode. So if you want to know uh, which one is anode, which one is cathode in a normal physical LED, uh, physical LED so uh, at that time you have to check the longer lead as well as the shorter lead of the LED. Longer lead is nothing but the anode, shorter lead is the cathode. Okay? So now here in this one, the leads are in the same, same line. So if you just hover the mouse, if you just move your mouse over that terminal, it shows it is an anode. If you just move the mouse over this, it shows this is a cathode. Is it clear? So anode, cathode. I hope anode is the positive terminal. That is clear for you guys. Anode is the positive terminal and cathode will be the negative terminal. So here also, if you just hover the mouse over this one, so you will see negative as well as positive. The negative as well as positive. So negative terminal must be connected to the cathode and positive terminal must be connected to the anode. So how do you do these connections? You just have to click somewhere from this point, from the terminal you have to click and then just move the mouse. That's it. The connection lines will be created. And this node is there, right? This round node. This node is for correcting the lines. That's it. Okay. Say for example, it was bent like this. If you don't want it to be say like a bent line, so you just have to make it straight. Okay. That is just for the looking purpose. Okay. So when you look at this circuit, if you want it to be neat and clean, so at that time you use these nodes to make it horizontal, sorry, straight lines to make it look like a straight. Okay. And then now what will happen if I start simulation? If I start the simulation, what should happen normally? So if you uh, take a 9 volt battery, okay, which is fully charged, and then you just uh, put this positive as well as negative terminal of the battery and make it uh, forward biased and then connect it. Okay. That means I start the simulation. As soon as I start the simulation, what will happen? The LED is burned. This is the symbol for burning of an LED of any device. Any device you take, it is not only LED, it is any device. So if you uh, look like, if, if you see it like this, then that device is burnt in tinker can, only in tinker can. That please keep it in mind. And then current through the LED is here. Uh, when you just hover the mouse over this LED, it says current through the LED is 915 milliamperes, while at the absolute min maximum current is 20 milliamps. Okay, so the, the LED can take only up to 20 milliamps of current. But what we are providing is 915 milliampere of current. Okay, so that is too much. Okay, too much when compared to the just 20 milliamps. Okay, that is why the LED is burnt. Okay, so if you want, to, say for example, uh, uh, I want to know how much current is going into this circuit. Okay, going in this particular circuit. So at that time, normally what we do, we use a Ammeter, right? So ammeter, you just click on amperage, okay? And then you, uh, you cannot do this kind of connection, okay? This is a parallel connection. Parallel connection is not allowed for ammeter, okay? So when you are using an ammeter, it should be a series connection. Series connection in the sense, so it is the current is flowing through the circuit. When the current is flowing through the circuit, you need to measure the current through it. Is that clear? Okay, that is why you need to connect it in series. Okay. So you can just take this positive and then the negative terminal, connect it like this, and then the amperage is 900 
15. So this uh, negative sign is just because of I have uh, changed the positive as well as negative term. Okay. So if I do proper connection from negative to negative and then positive to this one. So it is 915. So if you uh, just hover the mouse over, over this LED, then you can verify that the current through the LED is 915 and this one is also there. Okay, it is safe. Is that clear? Okay, that means the multimeter connection which I am doing is proper. The multimeter is giving you the proper values of amperes. Is that clear? Okay. So now, in order to make this LED work properly, to make it glow properly, we need to use a resistor. I hope that is completely clear for all the participants. Okay. So you need a resistor in order to make it glow properly. So the, this resistance is going to be the deciding factor on which how bright the LED is going to glow. Okay. If I start the simulation, see the brightness is not up to the mark. Okay. So if you take this resistance, it is 1 kilo. I make it as 10 kilo. Please observe the LED. Kindly observe the LED, everybody. Okay. I will make 1 kilo to 10 kilo. I hope uh, you have seen the changes. If I make it to 1 kilo, the brightness of the LED is more. If I make it to 10 kilo ohms, the brightness of the LED is the brightness decreases. Okay. If I make it to 100 kilo ohms, the brightness further decreases. Okay. So in order to calculate the resistance, exact resistance value of the LED, you have a formula saying that the uh, 9 volt is the input voltage, input voltage minus the forward bias voltage of this LED divided by the current, the maximum current which I have put. My, what is the maximum current? Can anybody tell what is the maximum current that it can handle? 20 million. 20 milliamps was the maximum current which it can handle, right? Okay, so the, the formula will be 9 minus 2 divided by the maximum current is 20 milliamps, okay? So it comes up to 350 ohms, okay? So you just have to make it to ohms. Here there is an option of changing it into nano ohms, micro ohms, milli ohms, ohms, kilo ohms, mega ohms, giga ohms, any, any kind of resistance you can create. And this is 100. It is in simulation itself. So if you can make it to 1000, it will be, the, the brightness will be like this. If I make it to 100, the brightness is more. But you see an exclamatory mark here. If you just hover your mouse over this exclamatory mark, you say you, you see that message saying that current through the LED is 65 milliamperes, while the recommended maximum current is 20 milliamperes. So the usable time, okay, the lifetime of the LED will be decreased. Okay, only that much. Now the LED will be glowing itself, but it doesn't mean that LED will glow up to its complete uh, what is that, lifetime will be there, right? To that lifetime it will not glow. Say for example, LED's uh, validity was only 10 days of continuous glowing. So if you make uh, this kind of uh, circuit connection where 100 ohms is there, then it will come only for 5 days or 8 days, kind of that thing, okay? So you just uh, have to change this resistance to what we have calculated, it is 350. How did we uh, get this? Um, okay, 350. I'll just put it in the annotations. So 9 volt minus 2 volt sorry, divided by 20 milliamps. Okay, so this will come up to 50 ohms. Okay, so now when we start the simulation. I start the simulation, it is glowing bright and then we don't have any of this star symbol or an exclamatory symbol. Okay. 
if you have a star symbol that means the led is below not and if you have an accelerometer symbol that means that you are giving little more current than the accepted okay accepted current is how much 20 milliamps you are giving little more than that okay so if it can if it can handle the current then it is going to just give you the accelerometer setup the accelerometer mark or it is going to give you the blow not setup. okay so we'll uh, stop the simulation you can just uh, delete these annotations and then delete the circuits i hope everybody is clear with the push button concept push button we we'll see that one very uh, soon okay so now after uh, we have uh, created the circuits this will be the plot in the space where you create the circuit component list all these things we have studied right so we have done a small uh, experiment okay this one i'll i'll show it uh, soon so we, we have a simple series circuit we'll see this uh, simple series circuit and uh, we'll try to understand how this nanod battery how it is going to be divided okay whether the voltage is getting divided whether the current is getting divided all those things we are going to see it in this one simple series circuit okay similarly similar to this simple series circuit you need to do simple parallel circuit also okay so here uh, we have uh, 3 kilo ohms 10 kilo ohms as well as 5 kilo ohms you have to just uh, do the connections and then to calculate you can use this kind of things okay so the total resistance is 3 kilo ohms 10 kilo ohms as well as 5 kilo ohms and the input voltage which you are going to give is 9 ohm okay so what happens is for this one the current will remain same understood the current is going to remain same all over the circuit whereas the voltage is there right the voltage will be varying and the sum of these things will be what sum of these things will be 9 is it clear 5 plus 2.5 plus 1.5 will be 9 volt okay these things uh, i'll just uh, show you to the circuits which i have done here what happens is in the parallel circuit simple parallel circuit what what is going to happen the voltage will remain same parallel circuit the voltage remains same whereas i hope uh, you can see the voltage remains same whereas the current is going to vary and these currents which are varied it will be summing up to 14.4 is it clear okay and the resistance which we calculate resistance is calculated by 9 divided by 14.4 milliamps or another for formula for calculating is what 1 divided by 1 by r plus 1 by r plus 1 by r plus these things we have studied it okay but practically we have not experienced it right okay so when you are going to do these kind of circuits okay simple parallel series circuits simple parallel circuits you your concepts about the series connection of uh, resistances how to uh, calculate the resistance value how to calculate whether the voltage gets divided whether the current gets divided all these concepts are there right everything will be clear when you do this kind of circuits is that clear okay and uh, this kind of uh, tabular column can be put so that the calculations become easier what are the things which are known 3k 10k 5k and 9 volt is the input which we are doing giving right so all the all these things are known okay and then next is the current you are going to calculate from the current you are going to calculate the resistance or total resistance this total resistance how do how do you get we know that formula right so sum is nothing else in a series circuit 3k plus 10k plus 5k will sum up to 18k so 18 we have what is the formula for uh, we are checking the value of the current v is equal to ir is there i is equal to v by r so you take the i is equal to v divided by r and then finally you get 500 microamperes this 500 microamperes will remain same for all these things okay all the uh, resistances 3k 10k as well as 5k so when these two are known you can calculate the other one when these two things are known you can calculate the 
other. Okay, I'll show you another feature of Tinkercad. Okay, so that you can use that feature and uh, do these circuit connections. Okay, what I insist is you guys do the connection by seeing the PPT which I am going to share. Okay, these uh, circuit connections are there, right? And validate this one and validate whether you are going to get. So, how do you check the voltage? How do you check whether I am getting 4.5 volts or 5 volts on these things using a multimeter? Okay, using a multimeter, I will show that uh, circuit connection also, how, to, how, how we can check it. So, when you open this tinker can, you are going to see this search bar. Okay, search symbol over here. So, when you just click on that search symbol, here, whether you are, it, it will ask whether you are seeing for 3D design or circuits or people. So, you just click on circuits and type. Okay, Shashank M. Dada. Okay, so you will get all the circuits which I have shared in public domain. Okay, all the circuits which I have shared in public domain. So see here, uh, this one is a simple parallel circuit which I have shared. This particular thing is a simple parallel circuit which I have shared. See here, no, 14.4 milliamps and then 898, 4.498. All these values are there. Okay, this one, all the values. So, what is it? 0 0.9 milliamps, 4.5 milliamps, and then 9 milliamps. Okay, all the things are properly there. Okay, and even you can just uh, see the values of the voltages across this resistor. Okay, so voltage across R1, voltage across R2, voltage across R3 is going to remain same. That is why. Here is 9 volt, 9 volt, 9 volt. Okay, I, I hope the concept is clear. And uh, what about the series circuit? Ah, here, simple series circuit. This simple series circuit is also there. 3 ohms, 10 ohms, and uh, another value is 3, 10 as well as 5 kilo ohms. So, all those values are there. When you just uh, click on this one, what you can do is you can use this thing called as tinker this or you can simulate it here itself. In the screen only, you can just simulate it here and you can check whether the circuit is working properly or not. If the circuit is working properly, then what you can do? You can use this circuit for tinker. Okay, you can change any of these things and it will not be affected in mind. Okay. This is there in the public domain. The clear? Okay. So now, if you see for uh, the, this one, 1.5, 5, and 2.5, these are the values which we have calculated 1.5, 5, 2.5. Totally, it will be 9 volts. Totally, it will be 9 volts, and the current through this circuit is there, right? That will be 500 milliamps. Only the uh, current, whatever it is there through the circuit, it is. 500 milliamps, it is common. Okay, it is common for this resistance, this resistance, this resistance. Okay, so you, you can just uh, use that uh, tinker this option and then you can create this. Okay, so these are uh, some of the circuits which have put it in the public domain. Okay, transistor is a switch on or off. Okay, all, all these uh, circuits we will be seeing it. Okay, in, the, in this uh, session. We are going to see all these things. First, we will uh, we'll make ourselves familiarize with what is uh, Tinkercad, what kind of uh, simple circuits we can create, and then we will go into a little complex. Okay. I will take a resistor, I will take a multimeter now. Okay. You just have to click on resistance, terminal 1, terminal 2. Simulate and it shows that it is 1 kilo ohms. Okay, it shows that it is 1 kilo ohms. Then I make it to 100, yeah, sorry, 10 or 100, whatever it is, it shows that number. Okay, you have to select that resistance, you have to click on voltmeter, uh, multimeter, and in that multimeter, you have to select the mode. 
you have to select the mode as resistance okay not after uh, say for example after you use a simulate or something if you try to change these values now it is not going to take before i go into the push button i just want you guys to know this diagram is very very important you can just uh, take a screenshot of it or you know, uh, however i'll be sharing it sharing this ppt that is not a problem if you just to take the screenshot and keep it with you it will be very much useful for this board like the push button okay tactile push button so in this tactile push button a as well as c this two things are connected and between these two things there is a switch okay so when you push this switch what will happen a and b is connected and c and d is connected okay these two things as well as these two things both things are connected okay so if you have a connection between a as well as d then if you push this button then what will happen a to d it is connected or b to c if you are connecting then b to c it is connected okay and then if you uh, do the connection between a and c even if you push this one even if you uh, press the button it will stay connected itself because there is a short circuit connection between a as well as c okay so uh, let us see the this one we'll take a push button here we'll take a 9 volt battery so when you take a 9 volt battery it is uh, you make sure that you are going to connect this 9 volt battery also with the led through an resistor okay you have to use a resistor for that if you are not using it please understand that the led will be burnt okay led will be Fine. So I'll just uh, connect this one and LED here. I'm not going to use any resistor or something. I just want you guys to understand about this particular push button. Okay. So for positive, see here positive. If I'm going to connect an anode directly to this one, and then for the negative terminal, the cathode is there. Right? For that, if I'm using this kind of connection, okay. So now for this kind of connection, what is happening is uh, here is A B. So sorry, A B and C B is there. Okay. So these two things are connected through this one. Okay. A switch one. A and B will be connected through this switch. When you push the button, then only the circuit connection will be. Okay. So I'll, uh, I have started the simulation. As of now. there is an open switch okay since there is an open switch the circuit is not complete since the circuit is not complete the led remains uh, it is not burnt it is open circuit okay so when you just push that button okay when you press the button what happens here is the led will be burnt you see the led is burnt and as soon as you leave that push button the led comes to the off state is a clear led is off and then now when you may try to make the led on it is it will be burnt okay so in order to make it proper what you can do is you can have a resistance i am not going to rotate all these things you can do the circuit connection any of so the this resistance i will make it to volts and then 350 resistance is there right 350 ohms and then i start the simulation when you press the led will be off when you leave it the led will be off on off circuit okay using a push button so this the same connection if i delete this one and if i take this and do this kind of connection if i just simulate it if you if you can see here the led is continuously glowing the led is continuously glowing because this one b as well as one a the terminals are there right here it is written as one b one a whereas in the presentation i am telling it as a and c okay both are same please try to understand a and c are connected internally b and d are connected internally so this kind of connection when you 
press the button or when you release. Okay, it is not going to make any changes. Please try to understand. It is as simple as removing this push button and making the connection directly like this. Okay, it is as good as this. Fine. So if you just try to remove this one. Try to remove this. Put a push button here and do this connection. Then it will be a proper push button connection. So when you press it, the LED is on, or else the LED will be off. Okay. And if you do this connection for this one also, you see the same result. you push then the led is on mm -hmm. release the led is off okay so uh, what we have uh, using one push button you can use two different connection say for example another led i rotate it another resistor i rotate and keep it like this okay so here positive terminal directly are connected to the positive terminal of the led Same kind of connection, and then negative terminal is there, right? Negative terminal. I am connecting with the one terminal here, okay? And I am connecting with this one and this one, okay? So now start simulation. When you push the button, you see that both the LEDs will be on. Okay, when you release it, both the LEDs are off. Okay, is that clear? If you remove this negative terminal, negative terminal which is connected to this, and try to simulate it, what result you should get? Whether both LEDs will be on or only this LED will be on. Okay, for your reference, I'll just show this circuit. If you connect. the common negative terminal here and make it short it will go for both b as well as b okay we we'll see this one both leds will be on okay i hope everybody is clear with this topic of push button okay please try to understand this one this circuit connection is very important because in most of the electronics uh, embedded system recording has stopped So in most of the electronic uh, applications which we are going to see, you make use of these push buttons as inputs. Okay. So uh, say for example, from a physical environment, if you want an input to be given, at that time you use a push button, a tactile switch must be used. Okay. So uh, understanding the connection of a tactile switch, understanding the connection of a push button, it is very 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 important. Okay. So now uh, we'll see what are sensors. Why do we need sensors? Okay. Well, say for example, in an embedded system uh, project, which uh, when we are going to do, so what is the use of these sensors or these things? And then we'll see if it will actually use. What are actually the services? Okay. So here uh, sensors, according to ANSI definition, it says that uh, a device which is responsible for uh, giving you a specified measurement okay something uh, some output which is usable okay so a sensor acquires a physical parameters and converts into a signal suitable for processing these uh, signals which are suitable for processing in embedded system is in the form of electrical signals okay either a high low or voltage uh, output all those kind of things we are going to get it at the output of a sensor okay so any sensor you take it is working in a transduction principle transduction principle in the sense it is uh, converting from one form of energy to another form okay converting from one for say for example converting from uh, if you take a temperature sensor for that matter so temperature sensor whatever temperature is there in the surrounding that will be converted into an voltage so temperature value yeah, and will be converted into a voltage
basic. Okay, is that clear? So that is nothing but the transduction principle, conversion of energy from one form to another form. Okay, it is also known as transducer. That we have understood, right? Using the transduction principle means it is a transducer. So here, uh, why do we? Why do the uh, robot need sensors? Sensors gives the awareness of the surroundings, interaction with the environment. All the, all those things are uh, very much clear, I guess, for uh, the participants who are there. If you are having any of these doubts, you can just put it in the chat section. I can be at any time. Okay, I'm just uh, running forward because uh, these are very uh, simple concepts which uh, all the electronics engineers will be knowing about. Okay. So this is the localization uh, where the robot is there and obstacle detection and say for example autonomous harvesting. This is the, these are also sensors but in a large scale. Yes. Okay, in a large scale. Okay. So they, this uses uh, image processing systems wherein uh, four four will be there. Right? That will be detected for auto. Autonomous material handling, autonomous material handling in the sense of the, these will be the robots automatically it will go and hook these spokes and then it, will, it is going to load and unload the shipments. Okay, and then uh, these are also face tracking, face detection uh, sensors. And normally, when uh, you are creating uh, any application, so you need to choose a particular sensor. Okay. So for that matter, you need to choose an actuator also. It is like the, uh, I'll give you one uh, very simple, uh, funny example. So we were like, if you are doing a project for a blind person, okay, if you are doing a project for a blind person, and if you are uh, adding LED for them, how can a blind person can see an LED there? LED if it is glowing or off or in any of the thing, how can a blind person can see? Okay. So the, that is choosing a particular output device or particular sensor for your requirement. That is very very important. So if you use a vibration sensor or if you use a speaker, if you use a speaker for a dumb person, it is completely useless. You have to use a light for a dumb person and then a speaker for a blind person. Those kind of requirements, uh, those kind of things, you need to uh, think as an engineer. Okay. So environmental factors, temperature, range, humidity, corrosion, all those things you are going to consider. Or economic factors. Sometimes recording is on. Application uh, finds cost to be more uh, important, say for example, cost of recording has life, stopped. Lifetime of the uh, this one, uh, lifetime of the sensor, all those things. If it is important, then you are going to go for these economic factors. And mainly sensors will be chose using the sensitivity range, okay, and then error, response time, frequency response, all those things. Okay. So say for example, uh, uh, if you take the sensitivity, so how fast the sensor can uh, give me the output. A range means, uh, say for example, uh, to what range of temperature value. Say for example, uh, a, a LM35 temperature sensor is there that uh, can give you from minus uh, 5 to um, 125 degrees centigrade. Okay. So the, those kind of uh, temperature sensors are there. Depending upon the availability, depending upon the sensitivity, range, all these things, you are going to choose that particular sensor for an application. Okay. Now, for COVID-19, all these things, you need an IR sensor, IR temperature sensor. Okay. So, for depending upon the application, so for COVID-19, in order to detect the temperature of a person, you if you use an LF35 contact uh, temperature sensor. So in that contact temperature sensor means it has to come in contact with that uh, material square, what is it? area wherein it is going to check the temperature. Then if you use it for COVID-19 uh, monitoring, 
it will be a completely useless project because government will be spread to each and every person who is not having their uh, COVID-19, right? So those kind of things you have to think and then select the sensors, okay? So and uh, here temperatures are not like temperatures, and sensors are having two different types. One is active uh, temperature, uh, active sensors, and another uh, one is passive sensors. Okay, so active sensors, what they do is they will send and signal into the environment, and then measure the interaction signal from the environment. Okay, so uh, sending a signal to the environment in the sense, uh, I hope you are aware, or you are aware of uh, ultrasonic sensors. Okay. These will send a signal to the environment and then the response signals will be there, right? That will be sensed, that will be understood, okay? That will be received as well as processed and check whether an obstacle is there in this particular distance. All these things you are going to see there, okay? And then passive or like whatever it is there in the environment that will be taken in and understood, okay? So passive for passive using, uh, very famous example is a temperature sensor and then PIR is also there. PIR what, what, what it does is whatever uh, infrared radiations which are available in the environment, that infrared radiations will be sensed by this PIR sensor. Okay? So these uh, infrared radiations will be given into the, micro, uh, the microcontroller and then according to that you are going to control something. Okay. And example here uh, I have given is video camera that is also there. Video camera is like sensor is there in the video camera and it is going to sense whatever is whatever is there in the environment, whatever is present. Okay, only that much it is going to sense. Okay. So Classification based on what kind of radiation it is going to sense, what kind of uh, vibrations, all those things, depending upon that, you are going to classify. Physical contact, you have to write wireless uh, infrared temperature sensor and contact infrared uh, contact temperature sensor. That is classified depending upon the physical contact. Okay. Concentration of the chemicals in the environment, say for example, is um, uh, MQ3, MQ6, uh, uh, what is it? Sensors are there, okay? Alcohol sensors. So they, these are uh, different uh, alcohol sensors, wherein MQ3 is different and MQ6 will be different, okay? It will be sensing for separate, separate, okay? We'll see all these things one after the other. Light means less resistance. So here it is like more light if you are going to put it on an LDR, it is going to show least resistance. Okay. Less light means more resistance. So this LDR you can use it for uh, doing uh, simple projects like uh, automatic uh, street light turning on and off, all those kind of simple projects you can you know, use it, these LDRs. Okay. And uh, these LDRs are uh, used it in phones also, uh, wherein if you just uh, put your mobile phones near to your ear, the automatically it is going to turn off uh, the screen. So proximity sensors in there as well, those kind of thing. Okay. So here I have done one uh, small connection for with respect to the resistance. Okay. I'll show this same connection here into the can. I'll take LDR. Or photo diode. Okay, sorry, photo resistor. You just click on this photo resistor and then you take the multimeter here and put this multimeter in the resistor. Okay, where resistance value are going to check and then start simulation. So it is showing 180 kilohms. Okay, 180 kilo ohms in dark. The light is not there. That means 180 kilo ohms it is showing. And then when you keep increasing, this is the brightness of the light. Okay, as you increase the light brightness, what is going to happen? The resistance is going to decrease. Okay, 
that means it is going to allow more current to flow resistance less more current okay here resistance more less current understood so uh, these kind of uh, things you can just uh, you can connect it to an uh, led and a power supply and then you can do a small simple project like when uh, the light is less the led must glow when the light is more the led must be off those kind of simple circuit connections you can do using this ldr i hope uh, it is clear this one more resistance less current this one less resistance more current in uh, when you just move it to 350 somewhere okay for this one you are going to see a proper glowing of the led because we know right we have calculated we need 350 ohms for proper glowing of the led to start the simulation okay so this is about uh, when the led is uh, when the light is not there and when the light is okay next we'll see temperature sensor so here uh, for this one we are using lm35 and uh, in in tinkercad also we have see here pmp 30 temperature sensor okay so this temperature sensor it is going to have three uh, output uh, uh, sorry three terminals it will be power ground as well as rear okay so here also in the temperature sensor lm35 we are having we are having three terminals one is vcc output as well as ground okay so here the output when you are going to observe 0 milli volt plus 10 milli volt per degree centigrade okay so 10 milli volt per degree centigrade it is going to give okay in uh, if you observe it in the tinkercad uh, temperature sensor in that also we are going to see similar kind here the uh, basic the centigrade temperature you are going to see plus uh, 2 degree centigrade to 150 degree centigrade but for the temperature sensor which is there we are in the tinkercad that is just a simulation right so you, you can keep any values Okay, they have set it to minus 40 degree to plus 125 degree centigrade. Minus 40 to plus 125 degree centigrade. Is that clear? Okay. So this uh, temperature, the LM35, it is going to give uh, 0. Uh, the scale factor is 0.1 volts per degree, and uh, thermistor is there. Right? it will give you more accurate uh, results than the thermistors and we have another temperature sensor which we normally use it for uh, uh, use it with arduino okay that is that temperature sensor is called as dht11 so this uh, dht11 uh, temperature uh, module uh, temperature sensor module you cannot directly uh, just uh, connect and uh, run the core, run uh, Write a small code. You need to use a DHT level library, and then using the DHT level library, you can uh, get the temperature value as well as humidity. Okay, it, it is going to give you both temperature value as well as humidity value. So uh, these are the specifications which are uh, there for DHT level. Okay, so when you are using uh, DHT level in your uh, program. Okay, in your circuit, at that time you can just uh, go through these uh, specifications if it is required. Okay. So here in the tinker plant, you, uh, you just have to uh, make this temperature sensor on by connecting VCC as well as ground, and then connecting these two wires, voltage, voltage output as well as the ground. Okay, and checking the voltage. You get my at minus 40 degrees centigrade, 99.9 milliamps will be there. At room temperature, 700 milliamps will be there, and then 
at a uh, higher temperature of 125 degree that is the maximum temperature is there right at that time you are going to get 1.75 volts okay so we will i think it was there in the yeah, temperature sensor Okay, the connection, you need not do the connection, it is already there in the uh, basic starters. Okay, you just have to uh, take it and uh, start simulating. So, temperature is minus 40. You see here it is minus 40, it is 99.9 mg. And as you increase the temperature, you see that there is an increase in the voltage. This increase in the voltage is there, right? that will be converted to this voltage, whatever values are there. These voltage values will be converted into a digital form when you are going to going to give it into an Arduino. Okay, so if you are uh, just giving this one to an LED or something, you need not uh, convert it into digital. You can just keep it like this. Okay, so if you just uh, decrease and when you keep on increasing the temperature the resistance value is also going to increase. The maximum resistance you are going to take it as 7.5 volts. Okay, I'm sorry, 1.75 volts you are going to get. I hope the working of the temperature sensor is clear. Okay, so this one you can use it with the Arduino to make a COVID-19 project saying that uh, when the temperature is more than the set uh, temperature value, you are going to give a signal or a siren saying that uh, the temperature is high, okay, the buzzer will be there, right, the buzzer is going to beep, okay, those kind of things you can make, you, uh, you can create those circuits, okay. Next is the tilt sensors. Okay, so tilt sensors. Say for example, uh, if you want the orientation to be proper, uh, if you want it to be flat. Say for example, if the orientation is like this or like this, then uh, you must uh, get a signal saying that the, the what is that? Uh, angle is increased or angle is decreased. Okay, so those kind of information if you want, then you, you are going to use something called as a tilt sensor. Okay, so because of the mercury which is there in this and the terminals which are there, so when the mercury gets in contact with these two terminals, okay, it will be in contact with the terminals only when you are going to have a tilt. Is that clear? Okay, those kind of applications if it is there, then you are going to use these tilt sensors. So in this field sensor, you are going to have the mega ohm resistance. Okay, when say for example, when the two terminals are there, these when these two terminals are not connected, it must show a high resistance. Is that clear? That is how you are going to check whether these two terminals are connected or not. If you have two terminals, if you are connecting, uh, if you are measuring the resistance between these two terminals. And if you see that it is having a high resistance, then it is nothing but an open circuit. Okay, then it is nothing but an open circuit. Is that clear? And if you have two contact points, and if you use your multimeter to connect it to these two contact points, and you see a very less resistance, that means it is a closed circuit. Okay, so uh, if you have uh, any kind of application wherein if it is flat then it is a closed circuit if it is flat or this I'd say for example um, 30 degrees down if it is there then it is open circuited if it is 30 degrees up then it will be closed circuited for those kind of applications you can use a tilt sensors I hope uh, the concept of tilt sensor is clear Okay, you are going to have only two options. Either it will be mega ohms or it will be 10 ohms. Okay. We'll see PIR sensor. Okay. So 
PIR sensor, the name, uh, the ex explanation for PIR sensor is passive infrared sensor. Okay, so I, in the name itself, it is there passive infrared. So why it is called as passive infrared? We have seen in the sensors they had two different types. One is active, another one is passive. So here it records the signal already present in the environment. Okay. So for this sensor, PIR sensor is there, right? It also records only the infrared infrared values. Okay. Only these infrared signals are there, right? These infrared signals will be recorded by this infrared, so passive infrared sensor, PIR sensor. Okay. It is also called as motion sensor. Motion in movements when you are going to see at that time you are going to uh, uh, get an output. Okay, when, whenever there is a movement, then you are going to get an output. That kind of uh, application, if you are going to create, then uh, PIR sensor you can use. Okay, it is very easy to understand. Okay, so the, there are so many components which are uh, there in the PIR sensor here main things which we are going to connect it to Arduino or connect it to any of these uh, uh, output devices directly are ground, VCC as well as output. Okay. So you have ground and VCC if you are connecting and if you take this uh, output signal and uh, check for the, uh, if you take this output signal connect it to LED and this PIR sensor whenever it sends any movement okay, in, the, in any area if it is going to sense any movement, then what it is going to do? It will make the LED on. We will do that project. We will see how it is going to work all those things. The delay adjustment, the distance adjustment, high uh, uh, low trigger, high trigger, all those things are there, right? These things, we are not going to see it in the tinker head. But physically, when you take an PIR sensor, at that time, you must do this variation. You can uh, do these variations and check uh, how it is going to respond. Or what you can do is, by default, what PIR sensor uh, settings will, they have given you, in that only you can keep it and make it work. That also you can do. And in the PIR sensor, in physical PIR sensor, you are going to see this cap kind of thing. Okay, this cap kind of thing is nothing but you are going to get this rays from all the directions to the sensor which is there in the middle. Okay. So, uh, in, in tomorrow sessions, I will uh, show you the uh, PIR sensor. In tomorrow session, I will show you the physical PIR sensor. Okay. So, uh, in the middle, there will be one small uh, box kind of thing, box kind of sensor which will be there. That is the one which is going to get all the, uh, which is going to consume all the infrared radiations which is there in the environment and check whether there is any movement in there. If there is any movement, then it is going to give you an output signal. Okay. This output signal is there in the digital form. Okay. Digital form. It will be either 1 or 0. The, those kind of uh, outputs you are going to get. Okay. I hope a digital output, analog output, all those things are clear for you guys. Okay. So here uh, the voltage all those things it is fine, the de delay adjustment, delay time adjustment, you can uh, have a delay time of 0 0.3 to 5, milli, no, 5 minutes okay. and then the degree sensing range is there, right? less than 120 degree within 7 meters. Okay. These things it will be there in the data sheets, okay. being an engineer you have to check the data sheets whenever you are going to play with the circuits. Okay. So in that data sheets, what will be the minimum voltage, all those information, critical information will be given there in the data sheet. You must check the data sheet before you start using anything. Okay. It is like a manual. Okay. You take any electronic device and you have a manual for that. Right? Very similar to that, electronic components will have a data sheet for that. So data sheet contains uh, the structural information, 
how uh, you know what kind of a package is that package uh, length all those kind of things will be there if you don't have any pcb trace for that you can create a pcb trace for that also okay pcb footprint will be there right if you don't have the footprint in your uh, software then you can do that one okay so those kind of applications you need to check for the data sheets please try to understand the uh, temperature in which it is going to work properly it is uh, minus 15 to plus 70 okay all the dimensions so many things are there that is not required okay so here uh, i have a small uh, circuit connection wherein i am connecting see here this is is connected ground is connected to this one to the infrared sensor here it is there and actually if you should write it as passive infrared sensor that is that and this it is completely different passive infrared sensor and infrared sensor that is different and this one is different okay infrared sensor it sends a signal to the environment and receives a signal back okay here it is just receiving the signal which is there in the environment is that clear okay so now uh, we have a circuit uh, that is an led is connected to the infrared sensor the passive infrared sensor and when there is a motion when there is a movement the led will be on so vir sensor i hope everybody can see the screen So here we have a PIR sensor. I'll uh, start with the. We have connected uh, an LED to the PIR sensor terminal to power as well as ground. Okay, power as well as ground is nothing but the positive as well as terminal, negative terminal. And then uh, this one is connected. The uh, this is a positive negative terminal is connected to the cathode. Positive terminal is connected to the terminal two. This terminal two is nothing but the output. So the power as well as ground, and then this will be the output which you are going to get. This output when you are going to give, then the LED will be on. Understood? Output you are going to get only when there is a motion, when there is a movement. Is that clear? So you please uh, try to see the simulation time also. Okay. I'll do the movement, and when I do the movement, please try to observe. the led which is glowing and as soon as there will be as soon as there is no movement the led will be off okay the resistance they have kept it as 1 kilo ohm and make it to 350 and then we'll see the brightness properly glowing we we'll go for start simulation when we are going to Move when there is a motion, when there is a movement. Then what will happen? The LED will be on, and as soon as I leave, the LED is off. This structure is the red, the dome dome structure. Okay, that dome structure is going to let in all the infrared radiation from the environment to the sensor which is there in the middle. Sensor will be there right in the middle. It will be sensing from all the direction. It is like a 360 degree kind of thing. Understood? Okay. I hope the concepts are clear for uh, PIR sensor. Same way here in this uh, in the in the place of LED, you can connect any of the other output devices. You can connect a motor. You can connect a servo motor. You can connect a stepper motor. Any kind of motors, or you can connect uh, this one. What is that? Speakers. Okay. The physio buzzer is there, right? The physio buzzer that you can connect. Okay, so many uh, different uh, things you can do, and each uh, device you are going to connect, it will be giving you some different applications. Okay, whenever you are going to have, if you connect a speaker for that, then uh, you you get, give a uh, signal application like uh, burglar alarm, 
saying that something is there in front of your house, that is why I am uh, giving you the signal. If you make the LED, just an LED to glow, then what will happen uh, in the night we will be asleep. At that time we cannot see the light provide all those things. Okay, that is why we are uh, using the burglar alarm, uh, a speaker for giving you an alarm. Those kind of applications you can create using this PIR sensor. Okay. So these PIR sensors it can be connected to the microcontroller, okay, Arduino microcontroller, and you uh, whenever you say for example, whenever you have any uh, processing uh, application, whenever you have a controlling to do, at that time you have to go for controllers, okay, controllers are the processor, all those things, okay. If you are uh, having a application where you when there is movement, suddenly you have to make the LED on and then suddenly you have to make it off when there is no movement. Those kind of applications you get directly connected. If there is any application saying that if you have if you are going to see any movement, then for five seconds you have to make the LED on and then after that you can make the LED off. For those kind of applications, you have to use a controller. Then you are saying that within this particular condition it must work like this in another condition it must work like this at that time you need a processor to process it understood okay, you need a microcontroller to do these things is that clear okay i will explain you how to do this programming using blocks okay those things will be discussing in the next class is that clear okay how to connect it with the Arduino how to do this uh, uh, blocks connection, how to insert these things and how to make it work. Okay. It is very very easy when compared to writing a program. So if you are uh, very new to Arduino programming, then uh, it is I what I suggest is you better uh, learn this one and then start learning that. Okay. That is the better option. So, as of now, uh, we have come to the end of the session. We will see uh, these sensors, other sensors are there, ultrasonic sensor. We will see the application of ultrasonic sensor and uh, how it is going to work. All these things, it is a little bit uh, complex when compared to other sensors which we have seen already. Already, whatever the sensors which we have seen, right? It is a little bit complex when compared to that. So, we will see that in detail in the next coming session.